Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. Oh, you can. Yes, I can. Oh, you can. Yes, I can. Oh, you can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Linda Sarsour, adored by leftists for her anti-Semitism and unapologetic defense of Sharia, recently declared that Islam is a feminist religion. And our deed has always been an anti-racist and feminist and empowering religion. I don't need people in the West or people in Europe or people in the United States of America to teach me what feminism is, because my beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, told me and shared with me and taught me how worthy I am as a woman and how important education of women is and how important for us to hold leadership positions in our community. So, Linda doesn't need non-Muslims to teach her what feminism is. But she does need someone to teach her about Islam. Let's see if Allah and Muhammad can mansplain it for her. Here are our top 10 reasons Muhammad was not a feminist. Number 10. Polygamy for me, but not for you. While Islam allows Muslim men to have up to four wives at the same time, unless you're Muhammad, in which case you can have many more, Muslim women aren't allowed to have more than a single husband at a time. Allowing polygamy for men but not for women is unequal treatment and therefore violates the core tenet of classical feminism. Number 9. Non-Muslim spouses for me but not for you. The Quran allows Muslim men to marry Jewish and Christian women, but Muslim women aren't allowed to marry Jewish or Christian men. It's assumed in Islam that men control their wives and the religious beliefs of their children so that a Muslim man with a Christian wife will raise Muslim children. A Muslim woman, however, wouldn't be able to control a Christian husband, so she couldn't be sure that her children would be Muslims. Thus, she can only marry a Muslim. Once again, this is unequal treatment and a clear violation of feminism. Number 8. A veil for you, but not for me. In Surah 33, verse 59 of the Quran, Muslim women are commanded to cover their entire bodies with their veils, except for one or two eyes, so that they can see. Since Muslim men aren't required to cover their bodies with a veil, we once again see the inequality. If a man lusts after a woman's body, it's the woman's fault, so she's responsible for covering herself. But men aren't responsible for tempting women, so men don't have to cover themselves. Are these kinds of double standards condoned in feminism? Number seven, a prostitute for me, but not for you. Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, allowed his followers to hire prostitutes when they were away from their wives. This is a practice called muta, or temporary marriage, in which a Muslim man pays a prostitute to be his wife for an hour or a day or a few days. Muslim women aren't allowed to hire male prostitutes for temporary marriage, so this is another example of Islam's unequal standards for men and women. Number six, a sex slave for me, but not for you. Muhammad allowed his companions to rape their female captives and slave girls. Indeed, Surah 33, verse 50 of the Quran specifies that Muhammad could also participate in the rape of female captives. And he obviously took advantage of this allowance because he got one of his slave girls pregnant. Muslim women certainly weren't permitted to have sex with male captives, which shows that Islam, yet again, is completely at odds with feminism. Number five, mental deficiency for you, but not for me. According to Surah 2, verse 282 of the Quran, the testimony of a woman is only half as reliable as the testimony of a man. Why is this? Muhammad explains in Sahih al-Bukhari 2658. The Prophet said, isn't the witness of a woman equal to half of that of a man? The women said, yes. He said, this is because of the deficiency of a woman's mind. The testimony of women is unreliable because women are, by nature, stupid. Is this what feminism teaches? Number four, 
hellfire for you, but not for me. In Sahih Muslim 2048, Muhammad proclaims that most women are fuel for hell. In Sahih Muslim 241, he says that women are the majority of the people of the fire. When a woman asks him why hell is full of women, Muhammad replies, you curse a great deal and are ungrateful to your husbands. I have never seen anyone so deficient in intellect and religion more overwhelming to a man of wisdom and reason than you. Hence, women aren't just intellectually inferior to men, they're also morally inferior to men. I wonder if today's feminists would agree. Number three, leadership for me, but not for you. Due to the intellectual and moral deficiencies of women, Muhammad insisted that women are permanently unfit for political leadership. In Sahih al-Bukhari, 7099, Muhammad maintains, Never will succeed such a nation as makes a woman their ruler. Try quoting that to all the feminists at the next women's march. Number two, a beating for you, but not for me. Islam instructs men to beat rebellious wives into submission, but doesn't allow women to beat rebellious husbands. Allah revealed in Surah 4, verse 34 of the Quran, Men are in charge of women, because Allah has made the one of them to excel the other, and because they spend of their property for the support of women. So good women are obedient, guarding in secret what Allah has guarded. As for those from whom you fear rebellion, admonish them and banish them to beds apart and scourge them. Then, if they obey you, seek not a way against them. Apparently, Linda Sarsour is convinced that beating women into submission is the very heart of modern feminism. Number one, child marriage for me, but not for you. Islam promotes child marriage for girls, but not for boys. The Prophet of Islam himself married a girl named Aisha when she was only six years old, and he had sex with her when she was just nine years old. According to Muslim sources, Aisha still hadn't reached puberty when her Prophet consummated the marriage. In Surah 65, verse 4 of the Quran, Allah explains how Muslim men should divorce prepubescent girls after having sex with them. Talk about a patriarchy. Needless to say, feminism rejects child marriage and must therefore reject the Quran's claim that Muhammad is the ideal pattern of conduct. Putting all of this together, we've got an ideology that is diametrically opposed to feminism, and yet it's being advertised as a feminist religion. Oddly enough, the people who are most vigorous in asserting that Islam is a feminist religion are women who, according to Muhammad, are inherently stupid and immoral. Perhaps when Linda Sarsour claims that Islam is a feminist religion, she's simply trying to prove that Muhammad was right about women being stupid and immoral. Fortunately, we don't have to agree with her. So, what did you think of our top 10 list? Are there any other reasons Islam is not a feminist religion? Let me know in the comments section. Off the top of my head, I can think of several points I didn't include in this video, so tell me if you'd like to see a follow-up video titled, 10 More Reasons Muhammad Was Not a Feminist. In the meantime, Linda Sarsour also claimed that Islam is a religion of racial equality. Be sure to watch one of these videos to see if she's right. Beat your wife up, what, what, what? Beat, beat, beat your wife up, what, what, what? Please don't listen to this stuff. Please don't.